Hello, my name is Lucy George and welcome to Under Questioning, the show where we get your questions answered. The NHS have announced plans to close A&E departments in Charing Cross, Hammersmith, Central Middlesex and Ealing Hospitals. The hospitals losing their A&E departments will become 24-hour urgent care centres, run not by A&E specialists but by GPs. They will no longer be able to treat life-threatening conditions such as heart attacks, strokes and internal bleeding. Two million West London residents will be affected by the changes and 100,000 people have already signed petitions against the closures. The plans are part of reforms that signal the biggest alterations to the NHS since it was first formed. The NHS claim that the changes will save money and improve healthcare. I'm here today to question Andy Slaughter, MP for Hammersmith, who is at the forefront of the campaign to save West London's A&E units. Hello Andy, welcome to Under Questioning. Firstly, could you tell us what is planned for the hospitals in West London? Well, it's the largest ever hospital closure programme in the history of the NHS, which means four out of the nine A&E departments, i.e. blue light, accident emergency, are slated for closure and two of the major hospitals, Ealing and Charing Cross, will almost completely close down. Most of their facilities will be demolished and the sites sold off. James from Barons Court asks, what is the major difference between an A&E unit and an urgent care centre? It's a very good question. The, they say that on each site there will be an urgent care centre instead of the A&E. Although in fact on Hammersmith there may not be even an urgent care centre. Oh really? And actually at the moment those hospitals have both urgent care and A&E. Because what the urgent care basically deals with, the sort of thing that you would go to your GP for. Minor illnesses, minor treatments of that kind, but they're open 24-7. So obviously what they don't deal with is anything that's serious. So that could be anything from a broken leg to a heart attack to a stroke. All of that, i.e. what most people think A&E is all about, that will have to go somewhere else. Okay. Tony from Chelsea asks, won't the plans close down these A&E units have a knock-on effect on other hospitals? Serious emergencies will be diverted to other areas where hospitals are already at capacity. Will other hospitals in West London be overburdened? They already are overburdened. Eight out of the nine hospitals already exceed their A&E waiting times, and that's before you close down half of the a and &E. So uh, if you just take Imperial, which runs three of the A&Es out of the nine, they have 280,000 people going through them every year, and they want to close two of those and send the, uh, those people either to the remaining ones at Mary's or to Chelsea and Westminster. And if you say, well, how are they going to cope? They just shrug their shoulders. Sophie says, I live in Hammersmith, and I know from personal experience that our local A&Es provide excellent service. Is the replacement of A&E units with these new urgent care centres a focus on budget over patient care? I'm afraid it is. Uh, the North West London area had to save a billion pounds uh, a year by uh, 2015. And whatever the, the government or the local council say, this is all driven by cost saving. Obviously, if you close down most of the emergency services and at Charing Cross, they're getting rid of at least 90% of the, the beds there, 500 beds, then you're going to save a lot of money in the short term. In the long term, you know, people aren't just going to get the, the treatment they need and it's going to store up more problems. Adam from Hammersmith asks, what is being done to save our A&E units in West London? Can they be saved at this point? I definitely believe they can be saved. Uh, we already handed in petitions with over 100,000 signatures on them. I haven't come across one person in Hammersmith or indeed anywhere else uh, in West London who agrees with these proposals. This really is a decision that is done by you know, bureaucrats and by politicians who, who want to, to save money. So we have got this independent review, which we're hoping that we will win, but we're not letting up on the campaigning. Every single week there are stalls, there are public meetings, uh, and we're building and building the public support for keeping our A&Es open. There have been a whole series of public meetings and marches and the next big one is this Saturday the 27th and that's starting either from uh, Southall or starting from Acton Park 11.30, 12.30 respectively and then meeting up, two marches coming together on Ealing Common about 12.30 
So uh, anybody who wants to join the march or indeed come along here, the speeches, or just show their support for the local health service. Last time we did this, we got fantastic support. Even from the motorists, we were holding up, all hooting in support. Really? So we're looking forward to it being a nice day uh, and a day to celebrate the NHS. Hopefully. Thank you. The campaign to save West London's A&E units continues. To find out more, visit saveourhospitals.net. That's all for today. Thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email us. To find out our next topic, visit www.catch21.co.uk or follow our latest updates on Twitter at Catch21P. Stay tuned for more Under Questioning. See you next time.